Next fight, Neil Magny versus Jeff Neal. This one also welterweight, featherweight, bantamweight, all very close in contention with lightweight for like most stacked, most interesting division. Welterweight, probably the closest of those. Both fighters also coming off a loss where it was a levels to this game type performance. Uh, Neil Magny just out grappled, out manhandled, out strength by Michael Chiesa, who's looking phenomenal. And Jeff Neal totally out technique, out footworked, out maneuvered, out jabbed, out struck by Wonder Boy on the feet. So both fighters have run through a lot of the welterweight division and made it look fairly easy. And both have hit the wall that is the truly elite premier talent of the division. So that kind of puts them in a similar tier. Now, Jeff Neal has been maybe a little more dominant in he's knocked out almost everyone not named Wonder Boy or Bilal Muhammad, though he did look very good against Bilal Muhammad. Neil Magny, I'd say, has faced the tougher stretch of competition. Guys like Anthony Rocco Martin, Robbie Lawler, uh, Li Jing Lang, the leech. And it's been mostly wrestling that's gotten Magny through those fights. So I think this on paper is a striker grappler matchup where I'd say the gap between Magny's grappling and Neil's grappling is much bigger than the gap between the striking. But you'd think Neil has maybe a tiny advantage there. But Neil hasn't gone up against a grappler nearly as good as Magni yet. So it's going to be really interesting how he answers that test. Um, the younger guy riding a bigger hype train probably. So more riding on his shoulders to see if he can, can go back to that knockout success that's made him such a fantastic process. But anyone who overlooks Neil Magny is going to be in for a rough night. And I think the striking gap is going to be very close. I, after Wonder Boy, this is probably the best striker Neil has faced. Then this next fight honestly could be the main event. Carlos Diego Ferreira versus Gregor Gillespie. Both fighters coming off losses, but both fighters in the lightweight division I'll say it again, the best division in the UFC, the most stacked, the most talent filled. And there's Gillespie a little more interesting, curious, not quite sure what we're going to get because it's been longer since we've seen him. He looked so dominant in his first couple fights till he went up against Kevin Lee, got caught by a head kick, knocked out. It happens, but you've had a lot of time off. What are you going to do? Because you're going against Ferreira, who we saw against Darius put up a very good fight, but get outstruck on the feet for the most part and get controlled on the ground, which was really impressive by Darius because Ferreira has fantastic jujitsu and it showed the confidence of Darius in his own jujitsu to go there. So it'll be interesting to see if Gillespie has worked has that same confidence that Darius had and is willing to make the fight happen in the area where he has the, where his biggest strength lies. But Fahera also has fantastic striking. Like you don't get to where he is in the lightweight division without being really, really good at striking. We saw that in the Pettis fight. We saw that in the fight before, I can't remember, but he took out a hyped Russian prospect and so Gillespie is going to have to show that he's improved since the Lee fight, because if this fight happens on the feet and Gillespie hasn't improved, Fahara wins. If Fahara gets on top, Fahara probably wins. If Gillespie gets on top, that's where it gets really interesting. Does he have the dominant wrestling to neutralize the jujitsu of Fahara? Does he have the confidence to use it? And is it going to be dominant enough that he can actually look impressive with that, not just very tight lane and praying. So this fight, really interesting just because it's two really talented guys in a division where a loss means much more than it should just because of how stacked and shark-filled it is.